Those hands together, let's give him some praise. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, put those hands together. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, you got a right to praise him. I dare you to clap your hands as fast as you can. Throw your head back and give God a right now praise. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And while you're yet standing, let's thank God for our chief apostle. Hallelujah. And now we're first lady. Come on, put those hands together. Let's thank God for it. Let's thank God for our co-labor in the gospel. Pastor Dr. Cohen. Amen. Now give yourselves a great big round of applause. Now wait a minute. Don't tell me you ain't going to clap right for yourself. I said clap for you. Let me show you how. Amen. Amen. Suddenly. The Lord has been good to us. Look at somebody before you sit down and just ask them, neighbor, where you here this week? Ask them where you here this past week. Oh, if they say no, tell them you missed it. My God, we had church in the temple this past week. And I tell you, the spirit of the Lord is still here right now. I said that same spirit is here right now. Clap your hands one more time and give God a praise as you take your seat. Amen. This morning we honor the Lord again for his spirit that we feel in this place. We thank him. Amen. For his goodness, his loving kindness, and his tender mercies that he continues to show to us day after day after day after day. Amen. And again, we had such a wonderful time during the women's convention on this past week. I'm so glad that, that, that the women allowed us brothers to come and experience this. Amen. It wasn't just for the ladies. Amen. But the brothers came, I tell you, and we were blessed by the word of the Lord. Didn't the Lord speak to us this past week? I said, didn't the Lord speak to us? Y'all clapping like y'all wasn't there. I said, didn't the Lord speak to us this past week? Amen. Amen. He spoke in some powerfully convincing ways. Amen. Started out Monday night, our first lady. Amen. This jewel in the gospel, Dr. Shirley Murray, spoke to us in such a profound way. Tuesday night, Sister Horton, all the way from Iowa. Amen. Davenport, Iowa spoke. And then Wednesday night, Sister Brooks, all the way from Orange, Texas, spoke. And then on Thursday night, Dr. Cohen uh, uh, came in, and I tell you, she preached out of her soul. Then Friday night, Sister Cannon came back and just topped it off. We had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. You know, I'm finding out as a child of God now that there are people who feel like they just honestly get too much church. I don't understand those type of people that feel like I done had enough church uh, 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 this week. I don't need any more church. You know, those are some scary people because the Bible said, uh, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. He says, and much more as you see that evil day approaching with all this raping and killing and y'all ain't saying nothing and stabbing and, and robbing and all of these child molesters. This is an evil day. And God said, you, not, you need to be in the house of God much more when you see that evil day approaching. And I tell you, we had a wonderful time all week and we are back this morning to have a little more church. Did anybody come to have some more church? I said, can you stand a little more church? Then look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, there's a word from the Lord. Or tell somebody, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Get it in your spirit right now that there is a word from the Lord. may not be the word you want to hear, The church getting quiet now. 
I said it may not be the words you want to hear, but there is a word from the Lord. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, there's a word from the Lord. Amen, amen. They need to understand that God is still speaking in this last day hour. He is still talking to his people. He is still reiterating the mandate that he gave to the body of Christ so many years ago. Amen, amen. People change, but the mandate of the church does not change. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I said fashions change but and seasons change, but the mandate of the church does not change. It remains the same, and God is looking for somebody who's going to line up with the word of the Lord. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh -huh, but I've brought a few amens in my pocket. I'm going to pull them out every now and then because I feel like y'all ain't going to say nothing to me this morning. But that's all right. I'm going to preach up in here. God is looking for some people that's going to go all the way with God. Touch somebody and just tell them all the way. Ah, look at somebody else and tell them all the way. Hey, Amen. I told God when I got saved that I would serve him to the day that I die. I, I, see, I'm not one of those fair weather Christians because we have those now. People that can only serve God when all their bills are paid. And Oh, God, could I pray? People that can only serve God when they're feeling well in their body. You know, I wonder how God feels for him to have sent his son down here to die for the sins of the whole world. And the Bible says that while we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't feel like it. Yahweh said, and he's in the garden wrestling with himself. He's wrestling until sweat is falling like drops of blood. But the Bible said that even after that, he went a little further. But now look at us now, been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God, could I preach up in here and won't even hardly lift our hands. Kind of, oh, my energy low today. Yahweh said, I can't come to church, child. I got to work five days this week. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to say nothing here. When the Bible said, if you gonna come after me, you gonna have to pick up your cross and follow me daily. Oh God, could I preach up and hear people of God? It's time now for us to get back to a daily walk with God and let's just stop calling on it when we're in trouble. Let's just stop calling on it when we need healing in our body. Stop calling on him only when you ain't got the money to pay your bills. But they that call on the name of the Lord shout. Feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So it's time now for us to get back to a real and right relationship with God. And I come to tell you this morning, God is trying to take his people higher. Somebody just say higher. Somebody say higher. Now I want you to realize everybody talking about going higher ain't going higher. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Because the truth of the matter is some of us weigh too much to go higher. God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost here today. Some of us asking, well, Lord, I want a greater anointing. And God said, there's some stuff in you. Y'all ain't going to talk. I'm going to preach about this. He said, there's some stuff in you that I still got to work out of you. Thank God Dr. Cohen talked about smoke and fire. She got me preaching about fire this morning. Everybody that got your Bibles, hold that power up in the air. I'm going to do the best I can. Somebody hold that power up. Hold it up. I need the devil to know that God still has a people that believes that there is power in the word of God. God bless you. Everything else is going down but the word of our Lord. Malachi. Bible students. Look for these struggling Bible students. We just went over this last Monday night. Malachi, for those of you that don't come on Monday nights, it's right before Matthew. All right, Malachi, chapter number three, verse number two. And when you have it, say amen. And the Bible gives us this intelligence. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Purge them as gold and silver. Listen to this result. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Did you 
you hear what he says? He says, who shall abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. And purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. It's to that end that when it's all over, they can give unto God an offering in righteousness. Because I'm, I've come to learn about God uh, that every offering is not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. See, it's, we got to go back to Genesis and understand uh, the importance of the story of how Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. He gave God the offering that God desired and that he required but then you have Cain on the other hand who simply gives of God what is convenient he gives of God that which he has in abundance that which is in excess he gives it unto God and not realizing that God does not require uh, what is just laying around God requires of you a sacrifice oh God y'all ain't saying that mm. he requires of you a sacrifice unto righteousness now what we need to understand and read this particular passage of scripture Malachi the prophet is trying to get us to understand exactly what it is that will happen to us when Jesus comes now he talks in this passage about John the Baptist the messenger who would come to prepare the way before him but then at the same time he flips and he begins to talk about Jesus Christ and the result of his coming how that when he comes he's going to purify us Yahweh saying that then here and then he talks concerning the fire, that fire of which the Holy Ghost is symbolic. He begins to talk about it. Now, when he tells us uh, that there is coming a, a refiner, then he begins to talk to us about the refiner's fire. Now, you've got to understand what the refiner's fire is. The refiner's fire is the fire by which things are purified. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing here, and God is purifying his people now. He's weeding people out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Here, just look around. Hmm. There are some people who were here last year, ain't here today. I'll tell you why. It's not because God wasn't good enough to keep them. It's because many times the fire weeds people out. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, can you stand the heat? Ah, look at somebody else and ask them, can you take a little heat? Ah, now look at somebody and help me announce my text. Just encourage them and tell them, neighbor, he's turning up the heat. Ah, or tell somebody else, he's turning up the heat. Why? Because now is a time of the refining of the people of God. Ah, would you clap your sanctified hands and give God a right now praise in the house today? Ah, now when we come into the service of the Lord our desire ought to be to be all that we can be uh, as it pertains to God uh, we ought not want to come to church and just be an average member because there are a lot of people who are just satisfied with coming to church you'd be surprised at the people that don't want to do nothing for the Lord they just satisfied child they ought to just be glad I was at church this morning look at y'all ain't shouting I'm going to preach it away mm, there are some people who are not satisfied uh, with with winning souls. There are some people who will never witness. Some people after they leave the house of God they'll never even open their Bible. They'll never get on their knees to pray. They're just satisfied being an average church member. Child I go and I give my offering. That means they ought not say nothing else to me until the next time I dot the door. But the devil is a liar. God ain't looking for average church members. God is looking for some people that's going to go above and beyond the call of duty. Look at the church getting quiet now he's looking for somebody that understands that my service for the Lord does not end after we say the benediction but even after I'm at home and on my job there is still a work to be done I feel the Holy Ghost up in here there's still a work to be done and how many people now are just satisfied with coming and hearing a message one time a week because now understand I don't come back Sunday night because I got to get up and go to work in the morning look at the church getting quiet now how many people are not satisfied uh, with experiencing the fullness that God has? Uh, now we don't want that. All we want to do, we want to come to church uh, and we want to shout. Uh, look at y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, we want to speak in somebody's tongue. Uh, but
God. Now, we don't want to really do nothing for the Lord. Uh, because to be honest, there's some stuff in some of us. Uh, oh, God, could I preach up in here? Mm, uh, that still need to be worked out. Uh, the, the church ain't saying nothing up in here. Mm, uh, and God is saying there are some people uh, that want to be used by God but can't be used. Uh, because God cannot mix the anointing uh, with anything that's not pure. Mm, and so now what God is doing God is taking us through the process of refining now to refine means to purify and remove the impurities from it means that God takes us through a process by which he purifies and removes everything in us that ought not be that y'all ain't saying nothing here and the whole church used to sing a song that said search me Lord search me Lord and if you find anything that should not be take it out and strengthen me. Why? Because I want to be right. I want to be saved and I got to be whole. And God is looking for some people that want to be right. That want to be saved and that feel like they got to be whole. And I don't know about you but he's found one in me. He's found somebody that's not satisfied. Turn somebody to sit next to you and tell them, neighbor, I'm not satisfied. I want to go higher in God. I said I want to go a little higher in God. So if that means I've got to search myself and I've got to get myself ready. I've got to prepare myself to go on with the Lord. Then that's exactly what I am going to do. Now when it comes to the service of the Lord, he's looking for more than just a shout. Because I told you a few weeks ago, I used to think we both shouted a whole lot. That meant that they were really saved. Y'all ain't saying that. I used to feel like every time the music played, if that brother get out on the floor, that means he really anointed. That means he got a whole lot of Holy Ghost. But I done found that different. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. I done found out that some folks shouting to cover up the mess they were doing last night. Oh, look at y'all ain't talking here. Y'all better say, man, they're going to think I'm talking about you. Some folks shouting because they was in the club last night. And when they come to church, they go overboard trying to prove to everybody that they still saved, that they still got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I wonder why some folk, every time they hit the symbol, huh, some folk up on their feet and shining and stepping on everybody. Huh? Listen, let me tell you something. Mm, I've been saved now a long time, huh, and I done found out that the Holy Ghost is intelligent. Huh? And if you shining and bumping all in the folk, huh, look at y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all better listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Huh? You shining and you're falling all down steps. Huh? You done shining and have to go to the hospital. Huh? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, God. Huh? You shining and you mean you got stitches because you was shouting, child, what happened to you? Child, it was a praise that didn't know it wasn't. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, could I could I just take some time and preach? See, I'm finding out now that everybody's shouting and shouting for the right reason. Some folk are shouting in iniquity and you wonder why they can't get it together. You wonder why they're shouting and dislocating their knee. It's because it ain't righteous, honey. It ain't the spirit of God. Some folk are shouting because they did a whole lot of mess. So they gotta do a a whole lot of covering up. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I'm going to preach up in here anyway. Huh? Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, he's turning up the heat. Huh? I said, tell somebody he's turning up the heat. Huh? See, what God wants, God wants a pure praise huh? from a pure vessel. Huh? He said, be clean, ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. Huh? And so now what you've got to understand, honey, mm, huh, is that God does not get any glory huh, out of you shouting in unrighteousness. Huh? Oh, look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Huh? God gets no glory huh? Out of you shouting with an unpure spirit, huh? with an impure spirit. Huh? But what God wants, God wants to purify you huh? until when you shout, your shout is holy. Huh? Look at y'all ain't saying, I'm gonna preach. Huh? He wants to purify you huh? until when you lift your hands, huh? you're lifting up clean hands huh? without wrath or doubting. Huh? He wants to purify you huh? so that when you speak in tongues, huh? it's as the spirit gives the utterance. Huh? Turn somebody next to you and tell them, neighbor, can you stand a little more heat? Huh? Ask them, can you stand just a little more heat? Huh? And so now what we need to understand mm, 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 huh? is that when we sign on huh? and we sign on as vessels of God, huh? then that means when we sign our signature, huh? we agree to the process huh? that God was going to have to take us through. Huh? Oh God, and I get excited when I talk about the process huh? because a lot of people want to be anointed, huh? but they don't want to go through the process. Huh? Look at the church, they ain't saying nothing. Mm, huh? Some folk feel like just because they've been saved two months, huh, they ought to be able to cast out devils huh, and walk around and boast about 
about it. No, honey, no, no, it don't work like that. You're going to have to go through some stuff. There's a process of learning you're going to have to go through. And many times God is going to have to teach you by the things that you suffer in this way. And that's why I'm so glad that when I got saved, nobody lied to me and tell me every day was going to be Sunday. No, ain't nobody lied to me and told me everybody was going to like me. No, that ain't what they told me. You know what they told me? They told me, hang in here. Because even if it ain't easy, it's worth it. Shake somebody's hand next to Oh God, I feel the anointing here. Shake somebody's hand real good. And tell them, maybe if it ain't easy, it's still worth it. They didn't lie to me and tell me everybody was going like me. You know what they told me when I first got saved? They told me, honey, if you can make it through Bethel, you can go all the way with God. Oh, look at y'all ain't saying that. Sometimes I'm finding out, that Elder Sanders, that the toughest people to deal with ain't the people on your job. Could I preach until somebody get upset? The the toughest people ain't the people in your house. The toughest people for you to deal with are the folk that shot right next to you and owe you money and ain't paid you back. Uh, look at the church, I ain't saying nothing here. Y'all better say amen or they gonna thank you the one at home. Poke a shot right next to you and act like they got more Holy Ghost than anybody. And don't realize the Bible say the wicked borrow and pay it not again. Well, didn't the Bible tell you you shall lend and not borrow? Yeah, lend, that means pay me back. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, pay me my money. Tell them, pay me what you owe me. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Honey, they told me if I could make it through Bethel, then I could go all the way. See, I can deal with the folk out there lying on me because they're a bunch of liars and that's what liars do. But now when I come into the house of God, oh Lord, look at people that don't even know me. Folk that ain't never been to my house. People that ain't never went out to eat with me. Don't know nothing about me, but still got everything to say about me. Child, I heard about him. Well, let me tell you something. The same person told you about me, told me about you. Oh God, y'all ain't talking here. Mm. Touch somebody and tell them, maybe if you can make it through Bethel, then you can be all right. Oh, look at the church, I ain't saying nothing here. I said, honey, if you can make it through Bethel, you can make it all the way. Folk got blessing and don't want to share with nobody. Got a van that won't even pick folk up for church. Look at y'all, ain't saying nothing here. Folk live right down the street from you. And you feel like your blessing is too much. You can't bring nobody to church. Child, they rode in your car the first time. Everything was all right. You get in there next time they got plastic all on the seats. Look at the, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Child acting like they van is too good for you. Let me tell you something. If I got to walk to the house of God, y'all ain't gonna talk here. If I gotta catch a cab to the house of God, I'm gonna get there. Whether you bring me or not. Oh God, could I take some time and just, just preach a little bit up in here. Touch somebody and ask them neighbor, can you stand a little more here? Oh God, can you stand a little more heat? And so now what God is doing, God is qualifying people. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. He's qualifying some people now. And I hear the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he has chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, just stay right there. Just stay right there. I know it's hot, but honey, stay right there because God is choosing you in the furnace of affliction. And some of us are wondering why we're going through what we're going through. Why is it that I got to deal with the stuff that I got to deal with? Why is it that it seems like God is turning up the heat? It's because God is turning up the heat. Oh God, and he said, I'm going to choose you in the furnace of affliction. And so now what that means, that means that when I go through the heat of the fire, God is only using the fire to purify me. Are y'all ain't saying nothing? God. I said he's using the fire to purify me. Sometimes it seems like we're going through in our mind. And our mind is a fiery trial. I don't know if you've ever been there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That when you're going through a fiery trial, you're dealing with some stuff that seems like it's getting your goat. God, could I preach up in here? Some stuff that's getting on your nerves. Stuff that you can't shake, you go to bed. As soon as you close your eyes, it's there. The telephone ring, you look at the call ID. It's 
it's there. You're going to work and it's there. Have you ever experienced something, mm, God, that you couldn't shake, you couldn't get rid of? It's a fiery trial. And other folk look at it and say, child, it ain't nothing big. But now to you, it's getting under your skin. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Oh, honey, you can take it. You can make it. It's easy to tell me that when you ain't been through nothing. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Child, if I were you, I'd do this and I'd do that. Well, you ain't me. So stop telling me how to deal with my trial. I don't need you to tell me how to deal with my trial. Because chances are you are my trial. Mm, God, I wish you'd high five somebody and tell them, neighbor, he's turning up the heat. Oh, God, he's turning up the heat. And so now what God is doing, God is purifying us. And he's getting us ready for this next anointing that's coming our way. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm ready for this next anointing. See, some people want the anointing, but they don't want the trials to go with it. And I told you a few weeks ago, God only give great anointing so that people can meet great challenges. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. If you don't ever want to go through nothing, then God don't need to give you an anointing. You don't need to be anointed to sit down. You just need to have a real end. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't need to be anointed to do nothing. You just need to sit there and wait to go to hell. But now for some of us, I'm waiting on this next anointing. I said some of us are waiting on this next level. And we're waiting on God to purify us and take out the impurities. Because for every level there's a devil. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? God, I want to go to the next level. Huh? And God said, you better get it right now. Huh? Because for every level, there's a devil. Huh? You running from the devil on this level. Huh? God said, well, the devil on the next level huh? ain't going to run from you either. Huh? You better sit here and get purified. Huh? You better make sure that when God takes this stuff out of you, huh? that you give it up to the Lord. Huh? Because I come to tell you, now God is turning up the heat. Huh? And hear what he says in the book of Malachi. Huh? He said, now, who shall abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he shall be like a refiner's fire and like full of soap now you've got to understand what he says now he says now the process entails soap and fire y'all ain't saying nothing here the white of the garment the heart of the wash oh God look at the church ain't saying nothing here when you've got a real white garment and you got a stain on it the, the dirtier the white garment, huh? the harder you got to rub. Huh? And God is saying, some of you are white garments. Huh? But now there's some stuff on you huh? that I got to rub out of you. Huh? And if you're not careful, you'll look at other folk huh? and say, God is rubbing me the wrong way. Huh? Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, huh? he's rubbing you the right way. Huh? Oh, God, keep on rubbing God. Huh? Keep on rubbing on me huh? so that when you get through with me, huh? then I can praise you huh? Huh? with the fruit of my lips and sometimes we'll look at it and we'll say he's rubbing me the wrong way but God is trying to make something out of you y'all ain't saying nothing here and he says now not only do I have to rub harder the white garment with the dirtiest stains but now I've got to heat the fire harder for the gold with the most impurities look at the church ain't saying nothing I'm gonna preach in a way I said God now has to rub you until he get the impurities out of you because there's a lot of people now that don't look like nothing. Mm, Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. I said, look at your neighbor. They looking at the person that I'm talking about. Some of us don't look like nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But we got a hidden value in us. Touch somebody and tell them, I don't care how I look. I got some value, honey. I said, I'm valuable somewhere. I don't care how worthless I look. I got some real value. And what God does, God has to send us through the refiner's fire. And he has to purify us so that the value that we can't see on the surface. Huh? Oh God, when he gets through with us, huh? that value comes to the surface. Mm -hmm. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, he's turning up the heat. Ah, 
Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, he's turning up the heat. I said, there's a hidden value in us. And many of us are there right now this morning. We are in the refiner's fire. And let me tell you something about the refiner's fire. Somebody understand what I'm talking about. I feel a connection in my spirit to somebody that you're in the refiner's fire. Now let me tell you what the refiner's fire is all about. The refiner's fire. He sits there. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. He's sitting there and he understands what it takes to heat this fire. He understands what it takes to purify. And so now he's watching over it. I said he's watching over it because he understands that if it's really going to be purified, then it can't be too hot and it can't be too cold. But the fire's got to be just right. And I come to encourage somebody. I know it seems like it's too hot, but God sent me here to tell you this morning that God is not unfaithful. But now if he's sending you through a trial, he won't let you be tempted above that you're able. But he will with that same temptation. Also offer a way to escape. And so he understands what's needed in this hour. And so he heats up the flames. Careful not to get it too hot. Touch your mind and tell him, neighbor, you can hang in there and you can make it. He's not trying to burn you up. He's trying to refine you. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I said God ain't trying to burn you up. He's trying to refine you. And so now he sits there and he puts in the metal whether it be silver or whether it be gold and he heats it up. Oh God, y'all ain't talking here. Until stuff begins to boil and we reach our boiling point. And I wonder is there anybody here? Have you reached your boiling point when it seemed like I can't take nothing else and now I see the water being troubled oh God y'all ain't saying nothing here and some of us God is going to take us to the edge of our strength and we got to reach our boiling point but look at somebody and tell them neighbor God is making something out of you y'all ain't saying nothing I said he's making something out of you and so now what he does he's sitting at the crucible and he's turning up the heat but now all of a sudden as the metal begins to melt when you look at the metal melting you see that there's a separation that begins to take place and some of you are there right now I was minding my own business in the office a few minutes ago and God spoke to my spirit and told me that now is the time of separation touch somebody and tell them neighbor this is the time of separation God is separating me from some stuff he's separating me from some people y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? So understand if I come back tonight huh, and I'm not sitting next to you, huh, don't take offense to this. Huh? This is just a time huh, of separation. Huh? I gotta get away from folk huh, that ain't going nowhere. Huh? And I, 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 I said I, I got to yoke up huh, with somebody huh, that understands the anointing. Huh? Shake three hands huh, and tell them neighbor, huh, he's turning up the heat yeah he's turning up the heat and so he's sitting at the crucible and all of a sudden the metal begins to melt and everything that's pure metal will go straight to the bottom but then all of a sudden all the impurities begin to come up to the surface and I come to tell you that God sent me here to let you know that he's bringing some stuff to the surface look at y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? Y'all act like I ain't talking to you. Huh? Touch them out into the neighbor. Huh? The preacher mean you. Huh? God is bringing some stuff. Huh? He's bringing it to the surface. Huh? Stuff that was hidden huh? and you didn't even know was there. Huh? God said, I'm going to send you through some fire huh? and I'm going to bring it up. Huh? It's going to be like David said. Huh? He said, purge me with his up huh? and I shall be clean. Huh? He said, oh, wash me huh? and I shall be white as snow. Huh? Then he says, create in me huh? a clean heart and renew a right spirit I feel like preaching here within me oh Lord and then when you do it I live for you when you do it I serve you 
when you do it I praise you with the fruit of my lips and so God says that it's time now for the separation to begin that's some stuff you didn't know about look at y'all ain't saying nothing that's gonna be revealed by fire some of you got an attitude look at y'all ain't saying nothing everybody know it but you they can look at your eyebrows and see something on your mind y'all ain't saying nothing here you got to have brows because every time something happens your eyebrows go up in the air you're looking critical and God said I'm bringing it to the surface look at y'all ain't saying nothing here he said I'm bringing your attitude I'm going to bring it to the surface Step that oh God could I go ahead and preach it God said I'm going to make sure that something get on your nerves so you see what's in you look at y'all ain't saying nothing I know you look good but ask your neighbor what's lurking beneath the surface look at somebody and ask them neighbor what's lurking beneath the surface I come to tell you he's bringing it up he's bringing it up he's bringing it up he's bringing it up your lack of commitment he's bringing it up your lack of patience he's bringing it up he's gonna make sure that you catch every red light y'all ain't saying that He's going to make sure ha, that every Sunday driver ha, is in your lane ha, because he's bringing it up. Ha, he's bringing it to the surface because he's got to separate ha, the anointing of God ha, from that other stuff ha, that shouldn't be there. Ha. And so now, ha, as I get ready to go to my seat, ha, I heard the Lord say, ha, not only ha, will I separate ha, the impurities ha, from the metal, ha, he said, but I'm going to keep you ha, right there in the fire and some of us are wondering why we haven't come out of it yet when I come to tell you God says I'm going to keep you right there I said I'm going to keep you right there I'm going to keep you in the fire I'm going to turn up the heat it's going to get hot in here tell your neighbor it's going to get more hot it's going to get hotter before it gets cooler God said I'm going to turn up the heat I'm going to turn up the flames because I'm not through with you and you know when the refiner knows that it's time to bring the metal out it's only when he can look at the metal and see himself in the reflection and God sent me here to tell somebody that the reason that you're still in the fire is because God can't see himself in you yet look at y'all ain't saying nothing how would God handle this not like you handle it what would God say not what you said what would Jesus do not what you did so you're gonna stay right there until he see himself in you see himself in your attitude see himself in your gratitude see himself in your faithfulness touch somebody into the neighbor he's turning up the heat I got to leave you now good evening family but I stop by to tell you he's turning up the heat he's getting me ready for a great anointing he's getting me ready to go back with him he's getting me ready oh y'all ain't saying nothing here touch somebody into the neighbor he's getting me ready he's turning up the heat so that when I come out I'll be shining and to the praise of his glory and hear what the Bible says so that he can get out of us and our offering in righteousness God don't get no pleasure out of you shouting with an impure heart God don't get no pleasure out of you shouting with a nasty attitude he gets no pleasure out of you shouting y'all ain't saying nothing here but he's gonna rub you until he rub it all the way out touch somebody into the neighbor they keep rubbing me the wrong way but I I said I I said I I said I I'm gonna stay right here until God get through shake three hands and tell them neighbor I'm gonna stay right here until God gets through heat it up Lord heat it up Lord heat up the fire but I
have to hang in here until he purifies me. Because you got to understand, if you send you down, there's something in you that shouldn't be in you. The devil got his own metal detector. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And he's searching you, trying to find out if there's anything in you that he can use. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, the devil is searching, trying to find out if there's anything still in you that he can use. If you used to be a gossiper, but you find yourself now just giving people just a bit of information, y'all ain't saying nothing. God got to work it out of you. Look at y'all getting quiet now. If you find yourself and you used to be a liar and now you're telling jokes, oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing. The devil know he still got something he can use. But when, 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 when you've been through the fire, I said, when you've been through the fire, and when you understand that God ha, was simply trying to make something good out of you, ha, then you stop seeing the fire as offensive. But you realize then some stuff in me, he can only get out in the fire. See, we like the Hebrew boys. Some of us just like the Hebrew boys. They looked at that fire. My God, it looked like it was just, it was death waiting to happen. And they tied them up. And the Bible said they threw them in the fire. They throw them in. Can't you see some of them folks reacting before the pain even hit them? Ah, 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 ah. Then they start looking around and they realize the fire wasn't that bad after all. Ha. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ha. And look at what happened. Ha. The Bible said it burned the ropes off. Ha. Some of you need to be loose. Ha. You're not going to get loose at a convention. Ha. You're not going to get loose at a conference. Ha. You're going to get loose in the fire. Folk want to jump in the church and jump anointed real quick. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Folk want to get saved and preach the next week. You can't preach the next week. You ain't been through nothing. He's refining us in the fire. Looks hot, but he says, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to watch over you because I ruined the metal if the fire gets too hot. But it won't have no value if things don't heat up. So he says, I'll sit there and I'll watch over you. And every now and then, at first, the little stuff begins to float up. But he says, it's not over yet. Turn up the heat. Then bigger stuff start coming up. It's not over yet. Turn up the heat. Then that bigger stuff starts floating up. Turn it up. Then those pet peeves and those, 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 those pet sins. That stuff that we could really be saved if we could just get rid of. He turned up the heat. So that the big stuff starts to float up to the surface. And you know what he says the end ought to be? That you can give me an offering in righteousness. God wants you to be so clean. Until when you come and shout, the angels will stop and look. He 
want you to be so clean and so pure that even when the devil try, he can't taint your life. Can't give you a bad name because you're so pure. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. God wants you to be so clean until when they trying to dig up dirt on you, you tell them, I already been through the fire. The dirt floated to the surface. He got rid of it. Now I'm shining. And to the praise of his glory, he chose me in the furnace of affliction. He chose me in the furnace of affliction so that when I come out, I come out as pure gold. And you know one thing about gold? Gold is too soft to be used. It really is. If you had pure gold, it would be too soft. You couldn't make a ring out of pure gold. Bring it down, bring it Because it's too soft. So what they have to do, they have to mix another alloy in it. So that now this gold that's pure can be shaped and molded and maintain its shape. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to have it. You look good, but you can't maintain your shape unless something is added to you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why you got to be more than human. You got to let human meet divine. Then I can be what you're shaping me to be. Oh, God. Then I can have that endurance and that stickability so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, I got something in me that helps me maintain my shame. Take the impurities out of me. But now give me something. Oh, God, I feel After you take the impurities out, give me something. Mix me with something. That get all in me. And that'll connect with me on the deepest levels. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I need this thing to connect with me on the cellular level. Connect with myself so that I can't be separated from it again. And he says, I'll put you in the fire. But now after I purified you, you're still too soft. You're still too soft. Oh, God. But ye shall receive power. I said ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now I can be used. Now I've been through the process. If you find anything that's not like you, I ask you, Lord, you know what to do. Wash me, Lord. Cleanse me through and through. Take it away from me. God said, I got to put you in some fire to show you your own attitude. Stuff you can't even take. You sitting here complaining all the time. God said, I'll make sure there's something for you to complain about because I want you to see that there is some in you that need to come to the surface. And if you don't get rid of it, then you can't be used by God. And we're wondering, why is God passing us over? Some of us just have a lack of commitment. God said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what's in you. And you can commit to stuff on your job because you feel like there are uh, uh, tangible rewards that are coming right away. But uh, I, I promise God, I'm not going to miss another service for the next month. God said, I'm going to show you your lack of commitment. You committed to everything else. And don't realize you can lose that job in the morning. You can die. To, y'all ain't saying nothing. You can die today and ain't got nothing to show for it. God said, I'm bringing it up. I'm going to turn up the heat until I bring it to the surface. 
Some of you might be struggling with jealousy. God will make sure you see everybody else's blessing. Because he wants you to see that something is wrong when you save and you still can't rejoice with them that do rejoice. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He's bringing it to the service. Arrogance. Oh God, look at the church getting quiet now. I better hang my hat right here. I'm going to stay here for a minute or two. Arrogance. Can't nobody else come in here and do nothing. Child, I've been here. Ain't nobody going to do a thing. If it don't come through me, then it ain't going to work. If I don't sing it, then it ain't going to get sung. If God don't use me, he ain't going to use nobody. Let me tell you something. There were people born a thousand years before you got here. And God is always going to let you see somebody. And stir it up in you. And show you that the real problem is not just jealousy. The real problem is intimidation. Oh, look at y'all ain't saying nothing. Because let me tell you something. When you got the goods, it don't matter who come or go. Or y'all ain't saying nothing. When you know that God is using you, it don't matter whether he's using you like he's using sister so-and-so. Just use me the way you see fit. Why are you intimidated if you're where God wants you to be? I tell you why. It's because you know you're not supposed to be there. He's balling it. He's turning up the heat. And now things are balling. And God said, I'm doing it because I need to bring some stuff to the surface. And if you're smart, you'll let it go so I can skim the top. And separate you. He's turning up the heat. But when I come out of this, I said, when I come out of this fire, when I come out of this fire, then I know for sure what it really means to be used by God. I know what it means to be shining to the praise of his glory. I know what it means to really be in a place to where God can use me Listen, my brothers and sisters, God wants to use you. But he's got to send you through some refining fire. Refining fire. So that even those little bitty grains of impurity comes up. Because he's coming back for a church. Without a spot. Without a wrinkle. Without a blemish. Or any such thing. He's got to purify you. Because I come to tell you, he ain't going to wait till you get to heaven to purify you. If you're not purified by the time he gets here, you're not going. But he's turning up the heat. And my prayer is, Lord, I can go through this heat as long as the refiner stays at the crucible and watches over me. Make sure the fire don't get too hot. But if I'm in it, I can know two things. First, that I can take it. Because he'd never heat me up beyond what I can take. And the second thing I know is that if I'm still in it, he's working some stuff out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's turning up the heat. But he said, I'm making something out of you. Stay there. Don't fight this. Don't fight the process. Stay there. Because when you come out of this, then you'll be shiny. And the world will be able to look at you and see that you got some value. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, I got some value. You might not see it yet, but wait until I get out of this fire. Wait until he brings everything up. Then you'll see what I'm really good for. I want everybody to stand right now. <laughs> I want every head bowed and every eye closed. 
every mind on Jesus. There's somebody here today. That really needs to surrender. You need to surrender everything that you are. I want you to come now. Don't wait on nobody else. Don't wait on anybody else. God bless you. They're coming. They're coming. Brother Herman, I need God to work on me. I want you to come. I want you to come now. Come now. Come now. 